the other thing we need to talk about when we talk about um, statistical techniques is another form of measure um, of dispersion, and that's variance and standard deviation. So as I just said, this is another measure of dispersion that we can use. Um, so both of these things use all of the data values in a set in order to give a measure of the data spread about its mean. Um, this is a fancy way of saying roughly how far away from the mean is the data. Standard deviation does that, just that. And depending on if we're dealing with a population or a sample, we either have the Greek letter sigma, so this is the lowercase sigma, um, right? We have dealt with the uppercase one before. Um, and S for sample. And standard deviation gives a mean average of the distance between each data point and the mean. Right? So on average, how far away from the mean is the data that I'm working with? Um, and the formula that traditionally we have to use is this. It's the square root of, well, think about what I'm asking for here distance between each data point and the mean. So I want to sum up all of the distances from each data point x sub i and the mean mu divided by the number of data points. And we can see that this pretty closely resembles, I'm going to use a different color, it's kind of similar, um, right, this kind of closely resembles the mean formula that we've talked about um, earlier in the chapter. Fortunately, we don't really need to worry about this too much. I'm just going to skip to the bottom a little bit. Because Ivy does not expect its analysis HL students, which is the class you're taking, to calculate standard deviation by hand, so we will focus on calculating using the GDC. So fortunately, based on what I'm seeing, we shouldn't need to worry about actually using this formula too much. So, um, that's going to be nice. Variance is just sigma squared, um, which is actually where the square comes from. The square comes from in the formula. Um, my thought is that variance actually came first, which is why you have the squares in there originally. Um, and then standard deviation followed. The biggest thing that you need to know about either of these, but specifically, um, especially for standard deviation, because that's going to be much more useful, uh, the closer all the data are to each other, the smaller the value of sigma, and therefore also sigma squared. Um, neither variance nor standard deviation are resistant measures. So outliers or extreme values will greatly impact your standard deviation. If I have any outliers in there at all, it's going to make my um, standard deviation really spike, um, and that can be difficult when you're interpreting a set of data. So again, um, we should be able to hopefully focus on just doing this by hand, uh, sorry, by GDC, not by hand. Um, so let's work on this uh, example here, and we're actually going to use our calculators to do it. So the number of text messages sent by a group of 15 students on a one-week residential trip were as follows. So I want to find the mean, standard deviation, and median. I want to find the IQR and test for outliers. And then I want to draw and label a box plot re uh, representing the data. This is just another example of a problem where you should read it all the way through before you go any farther. Um, I'm reading this through going, well, I need mean, standard deviation, and median. I need IQR, which means I also need Q1 and Q3. I'm going to need to make a box plot, which means I need my whole five number summary anyway. So this way I just remember what pieces of data I need to pull off of my calculator um, when I do this problem. So we're going to turn to our GDC here, and we're going to start by entering in all of the data that we had in um, the problem. So I'm just going to clear out this column. I can go ahead and actually type in my data. So we have 36, 40, 12, 0, 15, 8, 45, 28, 
20. Whoops. 19, 20. There we go. So all my data has been entered in, as you can see. Um, and if you remember from previously, we're going to go to stat, one var stats. I don't have a frequency list, so we can actually just skip right down to calculate. And all the information that I need to know is here, right? So if I walk through this, right, I know that my mean is 25.3. I see that my standard deviation, we're going to assume that this is actually the population here. Um, so my standard deviation is like 18.5. And then I get my five number summary down here, right? So my minimum is zero, Q115, median 20, Q336, and max 78. So it becomes really easy to pull up everything that you need for something like this right on your GDC. So now that we have all of our data collected or just pulled off of the GDC, we can actually start to work with this. So in part A, you're pretty much done, right? Let me just go back to kind of a neutral color here to highlight. I have my mean, my standard deviation, and my median right there, nice and easy. So there's all part A. And in part B, I want to find the IQR. So my IQR is just Q3 minus Q1. All right, so 36 minus 15 is 21. Yeah. And then I want to test for outliers. So one and a half times the IQR is, I'm just going to do this out just to be safe, 31 and a half. So again, if we think back to our box plot from before, my kind of safe zone is 31 and a half away from Q1 and Q3. Anything beyond that is an outlier. So my test range. Right, my condition here is it's an outlier if I'm 31 and a half units away from Q3 or 31 and a half units away from Q1. So if I'm 31 and a half units away from Q3, then X needs to be greater than 67.5. If I'm 31 and a half units away from Q1, then X needs to be less than negative 16.5. So do I have any outliers? I do. I'm going to go back into my original um, list, right? It's not always just the max. I could have a couple outliers. Uh, my only thing that's bigger than 67.5 in this case actually is just my max is 78. So 78 is an outlier. Draw and label a box plot representing the data. So let's do that. Again, I'm going to start with my number line. I need it to go from 0 all the way to 78. So we'll call it like 80 maybe, 10, 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Ah, oh, perfect. 20, 40, 80. All right, so I need my minimum, which is 0. Sorry, I'm going to do the box first. So Q1 is 15. Q2 is 20. Q3 is 36, roughly about there. So there's, whoops, there is my box. And my two whiskers are my min and max. So my minimum is zero. And my maximum is 78. So all the way up here somewhere. There we go, close enough. And I'm going to go through and edit, oh, sorry, and label my points. So zero. 15, 20, 36, and 78. And of course, if you wanted to show a more holistic and a more, um, sorry, not holistic, you want to show a more accurate picture of your box plot, then I would actually, again, call this an isolated point because it's an outlier. And if I were to disregard my outlier, my next highest point would be 45. So my whisker then would actually be 45 in that case. And again, what that does showing my outlier separately is that it actually shows me, well, most of my data is kind of in this range here. So it shows me a much, great, a much um, clearer picture of the range of anything that's not an outlier. And of course, my outlier is out here on its own.
but remember, where is it? It won't go any further back. So remember that um, IB doesn't really want this. IB just wants my normal box plot, which is fine. Um, but again, if you're doing any sort of research for an IA, you might come across um, what we call a modified box plot with the isolated outliers. So I just want to make sure you know what it is if you're looking at it. 